Hey viewers, do you think this is a fair fight? My new iPhone 13 Pro and the Fujifilm X-H1. Uh, certainly, the buzz around this phone would have you believe that its camera is the equivalent of pro movie gear. Well, not so fast. Uh, I'm asking you to help me compare the Fujifilm X-H1 and the iPhone 13 Pro. Uh, this scene is recorded with the X-H1. Using the settings I've fine-tuned since I started using it a few years ago, it's a little bit dark, with softly defocused background, custom white balance with a little red amber shift, sharpness is reduced to the max. Now, I'll switch to the iPhone 13 Pro in a minute. But first, this is my iPhone and my X-H1. Neither Apple or Fujifilm has paid me or reviewed this video before I posted it. Well, as always, the devil's in the details. On the iPhone, there's no way to adjust most of the settings I'm used to from other cameras, and some settings preclude others. For instance, even compared to stills mode, video on the 13 Pro has very limited exposure and color controls. I can't set ISO, shutter speed, or white balance. Or that doesn't make it worthless, does it? Well, on the iPhone, I'm starting with basic settings before getting fancy with HDR, ProRes, and cinematic mode. You'll find the recording settings not in the camera app, but in settings, camera. Two options for video format, the newer H.265, called high efficiency here, is usually called HEVC, and H.264, called most compatible, because it is generally more compatible than H.265, uh, for the moment anyway. The X-H1 only records in H.264. You can turn Apple's ProRes codec on here too. 6 gigabytes per minute of 4K30 off until we get ourselves set. And that's it. Uh, not sure how much record time there is on a 256 gigabyte phone, but when I switch to ProRes, it's about 30 minutes. Frame rate, selected top left, 24, 30, or 60. I'm a 30 kind of guy. Also, a 4K HD switch. Both are 16 by 9 aspect. Cinema, 17 by 9, which is available on the X-H1, isn't available on the 13 Pro. Now, physically, my first step was putting the 13 Pro on a tripod with my now old iPhone 8 for a teleprompter mounted above. Using two cold shoe iPhone clamps, one has a cold shoe mount on top, <laughs> I configured them together. The drawback here is that you'll need to be careful that the clamp doesn't push any of the phone's buttons and that there's enough room behind to access the on-screen controls. Awkward. <laughs> then set the position and the focal length to compose the shot. The X-H1 is generally two meters away from my desk and I'm about one meter in front of the bookshelves, with a focal length set at about 50 millimeters on the XF 16 to 55 lens. I can get the composition and background defocus I like. I'm switching to the 13 Pro. Uh, it has three lenses on the back. On screen, they're selected using the 1x, 3x, and 0.5x buttons, or press and slide to go from ultra wide 13 millimeters to wide, 26 millimeters, and tele, 77 millimeter equivalent. I'm getting the positioning right before I worry about focus and exposure. In my studio, from the two meter distance, the setting I need is 2.5, which provides the equivalent of my usual composition. But the quality here, particularly for skin tones, seems low. I wasn't sure if those in-between focal length settings compromised quality. So I also tested 3x, placing the camera 3 meters away. And 1x, with the camera about 3 quarters of a meter away. That is uncomfortably close, and the background is too wide. Let's go with the 3x lens, which provides the most pleasing results. Uh, the entire scene is much brighter than I like, so let's adjust the exposure. Uh, there's no control over ISO, aperture, or shutter speed, just this exposure slider. No idea what that's changing, but a setting of minus one seems to get the exposure to nearly my usual setting. Let's go with that, although I'm not crazy about my skin tones. The background is still sharp.
Uh, Kim activated the focus exposure lock on my face. That didn't help. And these 4K recordings are at a data rate of approximately 40 megabits per second. I know it's HEVC, but that is substantially less than what I'd consider acceptable on a camera. Well, next, I want the background blurred. Switch to the cinematic video mode, which reverts to HD resolution. 3x lens, minus 1 EV, and adjust the F number. It's indicated as a depth setting, not aperture, to the smallest setting, F2. The data rate now is about 14 megabits, a number that's much lower than I'm happy with. But of course, the proof is in the video which I find a little noisier and a little less detailed. My skin is oddly blurry. If that's an effect, there's no way to turn it off. A couple of notes here. After shooting in cinematic mode, the phone wants some time to process the file before you can import it to a Mac. And on your Mac, you'll need Mac OS Monterey and Final Cut 10.6. Now, at first, the background blur effect is gone. In the inspector, select cinematic mode to turn on the effect. And to adjust the depth of field slider, maybe 2 is a little extreme, happier with 2.8. And although the background is generally fine, if you look at the edges on my hair and the plant in the foreground, what we're seeing is clearly a blur and not bokeh. That said, I've now got the shot to where I want it, but I'm disappointed. My take, it's not suitable for this purpose. If I want a defocused background, my only option is cinematic mode in HD with its disappointingly low data rate. And that means foregoing 4K and ProRes. Now, the 13 Pro isn't all bad. The ability to set the background focus blur while editing is pretty sweet. The macro capability is amazing, and the ProRes HDR footage is spectacular. Uh, please share your thoughts in the comments. Uh, I'll continue to work on this, but let me know if you have suggestions for me. And in case you're wondering, all of the audio in this video was recorded externally. Uh, you may have noticed that there were no ads to interrupt this video, and I didn't stop to tell you something that someone paid me to say. Those of you who support this channel by being members make that possible. And whether you join me today as a member, a subscriber, or just an occasional viewer, thanks. Stay safe.